Today we're going to be talking about the de Broglie wavelength. So equating Planck's hypothesis, which is E equals HF, and Einstein's energy mass relation e equals mc squared, a man called Louis de Broglie to po uh, proposed that light has momentum. So in equating those and, and uh, working with the variables, he determined that light having a momentum m times c, even though it is massless, uh, the momentum m, m times c uh, equal, equaling the momentum p is equal to h Planck's constant divided by the wavelength of the light. So he also conversely proposed that particles that have momentum uh, have a wavelength. So each of the each of the part any particle that has a wavelength, whether it is um, an electron or whether you can take it as a collection of particles, um, has a wavelength um, and a wavelength that may or may not be measured depending on its uh, mass and velocity. Just recall that momentum is uh, mass times velocity. So this wavelength here would be the de Broglie wavelength. So this sort of idea here that light has momentum uh, can be is is evident um, using devices like a Crookes radiometer, um, a device that shows that shining light simply on some, on some uh, panels can allow them to be turned by the momentum of the light, and also some uh, more science, science fiction style uh, methods of space travel, space propulsion, including light sails, light sails um, use this same concept, that light has momentum. And this concept here, this concept of matter waves, are uh, waves uh, wa um, that the matter has can have a wavelength if it if it is moving at a fast enough velocity, um, is very. You can see here that a wavelength really needs uh, the momentum to be incredibly small, a very very small momentum um, for the wavelength to be to be large enough. Uh, to, to be usable and this this sort of thing is becomes more useful when you look at uh, the motion of electrons tiny 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 masses very small masses even though electrons can be moving incredibly fast the mass is so small that they show wave-like properties and the electrons can exhibit these wave-like properties even when looking at um, using electrons in experiments like the double slit experiment, Young's double slit experiment, instead of using light and seeing diffraction patterns um, and interference patterns, you can see those same interference patterns firing electrons, firing electrons at double slits. Uh, you can see this exact same wave property of matter. Uh, and you can, it's also evident in the um, in the, in the waves and the wave function of el electrons as they orbit atoms in their quantum states. The wavelength that those electrons have is based on the velocity that they have moving, uh, moving around the nucleus of uh, atoms. So just a couple of quick examples. Uh, find the momentum of an X-ray uh, traveling with this frequency, a frequency that's this high. Uh, from the uh, the higher the frequency, the higher the energy, the higher the momentum, uh, and, and a, a particle is going to have. You can see here, momentum and frequency are uh, directly proportional, in direct direct proportion. So a lower wavelength is going to mean less momentum. Uh, waves such as radio waves are going to have less momentum uh, because they have such a large wavelength and they have a, a very low frequency. So plugging in these uh, values in, uh, value for Planck's constant in here, uh, we have, I've, you notice I've used uh, the joule seconds uh, value for Planck's constant. That's because the energy we're going to be looking at here, the energy we're going to be looking at SI units. We're looking at SI units for momentum, uh, kilogram meters per second. We're not looking at uh, anything involving electron volts here. So this uh, Planck's constant multiplied by 1.5 times 10 to the 18, the uh, frequency of our, our radiation divided by uh, C divided by the speed of light and we can see that uh, the momentum it has is very very low uh, 3.32 times 10 to the negative 24 kilogram meters per second um, if, if you think about a, uh, a one kilogram uh, baseball uh, traveling at, at uh, 
at uh, about 20 metres per second, that's going to have uh, a, a much larger amount of momentum um, than this will have. But when, when uh, uh, trillions and trillions of, of photons, of X-ray photons, are, uh, are being involved, then the momentum can be quite great, can be quite large. So, uh, looking at question two, what is the wavelength of a 1500 kilogram Lamborghini travelling at 250 kilometres an hour? Um, we can use uh, the de Broglie uh, formula to work out the matter waves, the, the de Broglie wavelength here, um, and substitute in Planck's constant. Once again, we're using the SI units for, um, for uh, mass and for velocity. So once the, the mass here, 1500 uh, kilograms, the velocity isn't in meters per second, it's in, kil in kilometers per hour. So to convert the 250 uh, kilometers per hour to meters per second, we can divide by 3.6, um, and that will get our velocity in meters per second. Uh, put it, plugging all that in, we see that the, the, the wavelength of our Lamborghini is 6.36 times 10 to the negative 39 meters. Uh, just as a reference point, that is 1,000 1,000 times smaller, 1,000 times smaller than the Planck wavelength, which is, uh, or the Planck length, sorry, the Planck length, which is uh, a theoretical uh, amount that that is is so small that even we can't detect it. Um, but scientists are striving to to uh, and physicists are striving striving to try and, and find um, something that they can uh, an apparatus that they can use to detect such a small uh, length. It's very very tiny. So this is a thousand times smaller even than that. A thousand times less detectable than something that scientists can already not detect. So it is very very small, and this is why we don't we don't see this this wavelength uh, this wave property um, every day. The, the masses that we're talking about are simply too large, and you can see, as, as I pointed out earlier, um, the mass and velocity, um, the uh, momentum needs to be very, very low, um, a very, very low mass to detect the wavelength.